Dr. Mark Carrier is with us right now. He is uh, Thrombosis Canada. He's with Thrombosis Canada and with the University of Ottawa and Ottawa Hospital Research Institute as well. Dr. Mark, hello, how are you? Thank you very much for having me on the show, Dylan. Good to see you here. Now, we're talking about thrombosis. That's right. So okay, so not everybody knows what thrombosis is. I think I've heard the term a couple of times, but it's pretty serious. Yeah, it is, and unfortunately, it doesn't have a lot of public awareness, and that's what we're trying to do, create a little bit of awareness amongst the general population, because thrombosis will kill more people in Canada than breast cancer, HIV, and roadside accident all together. So wow. it's really something to be important to be aware of. It sounds like it's pretty important to be aware of it because that's so it's a it's the number one killer. Would you? Well, is that true? It's it's a very important killer, and and it's not as he sexy as heart and strokes are, and therefore a lot of people don't necessarily know too much about them. But they're venous clots. They usually start in your leg, and mm -hmm. you would have swelling and tenderness and and redness of your leg, and sometimes these will move up. When they move up, they go to your lungs. That would be called a pulmonary embolism. They're the two ends of the same tube, and they can be a killer for sure. Wow. Okay. So sorry, you said they, they where do they start or where do they usually happen? So typically they start in the lower limb, so they would start in one of the legs, and then the patient would have significant swelling. They would see some, sometimes the, the, the leg gets really warm, it can get really red. Sometimes there's no symptoms at all in the leg, but they travel to the lungs. Most people would then have sudden chest pain, they would have shortness of breath, you know, if they're able to use a few, able to usually walk a few blocks and all of a sudden they can only walk for one, for example, a big difference in their mm -hmm. exercise tolerance, for example. Um, and when they have chest pain, typically this is worse with deep breathing, this would be signs of a clot in your lungs. Wow. So is that the problem then? People don't know how to diagnose this? Exactly. So unfortunately, people often uh, will wait for days before seeking medical attention. And then sometimes there's also times in your life where you're going to be more likely to have these blood clots during pregnancy, for example, if you have an underlying cancer, if you're undergoing surgery, if you're in the hospital. So we're trying to create awareness so if you do have these signs, symptoms during this, these high-risk periods in your life to seek medical attention because if you don't and we delay symptoms, you can die out of these uh, clots, of course, but also, more importantly, you can have long-term side effects or consequences. So some people have dull, achy pain for the rest of their lives in their lower limbs. They would have chronic shortness of breath, and that really mm -hmm. uh, makes their quality of life uh, worse. Wow. Okay, so once it is diagnosed, what can be done? So as soon as it's diagnosed, if you seek medical attention, you go to the emergency room or you see your doctor or a uh, uh, health professional, it can be diagnosed right away. We start usually by doing a little bit of a blood test that can screen to see if this is if your symptoms are related to a blood clots or not and if not the the diagnostic modality for the leg is just an ultrasound and if it's in your chest it'd be a CAT scan as soon as we have the diagnosis we would start blood dinners it's usually a tablet sometimes it can be an injection but as soon as it starts it will stabilize the clot, make sure no new clots are forming or traveling or causing more trouble, mm. and will avoid or diminish the probability of having long-term consequences from mm. these clots. And World Death Thrombosis Day just passed this past Friday, so obviously um, this day is important to, to spread education. Right, so we've been having World Thrombosis Day for four years now and it's been growing and growing, trying to create awareness not only in Ontario, in Ottawa, in Canada, but around the world as well. It's always on October 13th because it's the birth date of the grandfather of thrombosis, if we may, okay. and um, it's just a matter of trying to get people to know a little bit about the signs and symptoms so that they don't wait and they can seek medical attention as soon as mm -hmm. they have them. So what is AF then? So AF is atrial fibrillation, so that's a funny heart rhythm that will cause thrombosis as well, but within the heart. And that's very common. It's more common as we get older over time. And again, you know, when the funny heart rhythm is, when your heart is not beating at the right pace, it can create little clots, little mm -hmm. thromboses that can spread and then that can cause strokes or other blood clots in the, in the body. And that can be prevented with blood thinners as well. Okay, so blood thinner, what exactly is a blood thinner then? So a, a blood thinner, there's different types of medication. We often think of blood thinners like aspirin that we can take over the counter or clopidogrel or Plavix, but these blood thinners need to be more powerful. Okay. And they're really blood thinners that are 
affecting the coagulation factors to make sure the blood stays very thin. There's mm -hmm. still lots of coagulation factors. So if you injure yourself or if you cut yourself or you have an accident, there's still lots of things and we will avoid any complication, but you need to thin the blood to prevent these from happening. Okay, so we have about a minute left. So, so you, you need to get a prescription usually for like a very good blood thinner? So like because you're talking about aspirin or that's that's good but not not great correct so for for the typical thrombosis that wouldn't be strong enough to to treat or to prevent these blood clots from happening you need to have a medication that is prescribed by your doctor mm -hmm. it's usually taking once or twice a day there's very little side effects usually some of these medication are a little bit older a lot of the uh, people at home will be taking warfarin for example that's the old blood thinners that we've been taking over the past few years there's been a number of new blood thinners available that have less drug to food or drug to drug interaction there's sometimes they're slightly bit more popular mm -hmm. so there's a lot of different variety of uh, medication that one can use that will prevent these complications or treat the, the okay. blood clot so for more information and to be proactive we should go to thrombosiscanada.ca absolutely and we have a whole site of the uh, a whole site of the website that is dedicated to patients okay dr mark carrier thank you very much Thank you very much. This for is having a very me. important uh, uh, problem, and uh, we appreciate your time on this. Thank you for thank having you. me. And thank you for being here. Have a good day.